think most important thing to me is that certain business decisions can fail, but the family unit cannot fail. Because once the family unit fails, there will be no future decisions right, being made. Jeremy Lim grew up surrounded by watches. His father, Anthony Lim, founded Cortina Watch in 1972 with a shop in Colombo Court. By the time Mr Lim entered the family business in the year 2000, Cortina was a well-known name. The company went public in 2002. I'm Sumiko Tan, executive editor of The Straits Times. I'm having lunch with Mr Lim at Imperial Treasure Fine Shanghai Cuisine in Neon City. The CEO of Cortina Watch looks back at the buying frenzy of luxury timepieces during the COVID-19 pandemic. He also explains why he always advises customers to really understand the watches they're buying. What do you feel about people who buy watches for investment? There's nothing wrong with that, you know, but I'm not someone that is strongly advocating that you should buy a watch for an investment. I mean, a watch is something that you should enjoy. Okay? While enjoying it and it appreciates in value, of course you feel better. Prices of watches also went up a lot, at least in the secondary market? Yes. I think the prices in the uh, secondary market is very much due to speculation. But in terms of value of a brand new watch that is being produced today, it has also gone up because of uh, the materials that are being used, the lack of craftsmen. We are now post-COVID that everything is back to normal. It's actually not true because a lot of skilled people have actually moved out of the industry. To retrain a skilled person, it takes years. A lot of consumers are also saying, oh, they are deliberately not producing as much as demand. But really, it takes three to five years to really train a watchmaker to assemble the watch. Do you really think that a, a machine can assemble 100, 200 different parts in different ways into a watch? No, it's all through hands and eyes. Do watch trends and preferences change very much over time? In the 80s, there's this quartz revolution, right? So there's a big preference for quartz watches. And then coming into the 90s, that's where you see the preferences starts to shift into high mechanical watchmaking. We are talking about highly precise movements. So a few brands decided that look, mechanical watches can be used as a timekeeping device and as well as an art form. Back then, classical watches, uh, we are looking at size 34 mm or 36 mm. But now because of the size of the movement and the functions, the complexity, yeah, we have no choice. Design something out for 44 mm, for example, at one stage, we talk about miniaturization, right? Even with uh, mobile phones in the past. Yes, watches do go through that trend as well. Somehow in this past few years, the challenge came back, but now it's Tina's mechanical watch. So for the interview, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a very neutral brand, which is our own house brand. We distribute this through uh, Asia Pacific. It's a Fermula. It doesn't tell time in a normal way because the hours are jumbled up, so it's not a conventional one, two, three, four o'clock. Eight o'clock is at the 12 o'clock is um, at the eight o'clock position. So the hour jumps to where, where the hour is supposed to be. So they call this a crazy hour. So this was your first Frank Muller. How much was it? I think this was about 27 or 28,000. When did you buy it? I bought it after the acquisition of Cincy. If we can talk about the COVID years, they yeah. were actually good for Cortina. Yes, it was actually good for Cortina uh, and it was something that we didn't see coming. We had the lockdown which was 2020. There was literally zero business and then we literally on the phone with our team talking about how we can go online to embrace our customers, right? So we did something like that and something that unbelievably happened was that there was so much liquidity because people couldn't travel that all of a sudden the spotlight are on luxury items, be it motor vehicles, luxury, clothings, handbags, even watches. And what also happened during that year was the decision that we took to acquire Sincere. We could see it's the opportunity that we feel if we don't jump into it at that point in time, we may not have another opportunity. And my brother and I decided with the blessing of my dad. How do you divide the work between your, yourself and your siblings? My brother is the group CEO of Cortina Holdings. 
I am the COO with him overlooking the two entities. My sister takes care of Frank Muller's distribution as well as some of the house brands. We also report to the board of directors. How do you keep a family business very cordial? I think most important thing to me is that certain business decisions can fail, but the family unit cannot fail. Because once the family unit fails, there will be no future decisions being made. There must be uh, times where I be a bit more tactful when you are pushing a new idea. Take a step back if necessary. Take MC the next day, come back three days later and say, hi bro, let's go. So one final question, what sort of advice would you give to someone who wants to you know, spend quite a bit of money on a watch? A lot of people before they buy a watch today, they have a lot of ways to find out about the brand, about the watch, through the various social media or internet. So my advice is that, you know, read up, okay, but also give some time to our guys to explain to you about the watch in terms of its functionality, the values of the brand, the history of the brands, and the movement, which is the most important. If you own, for example, a certain brand, whenever if you go to Geneva, you are automatically on the invite list to go to a museum. It's not just about coming in, picking up the watch, putting down the money and out of the store. Thanks very much for having me. No problem, lunch. no problem. Thank you. It is one of the hot seats. Uh, and certainly I think um, for land transport in particular, because it touches uh, the lives of many Singaporeans on a daily basis, uh, we will have to make sure that we look after various aspects of